Good morning and welcome to WIT AM, your daily newscast of world, national, and local news. We also have entertainment, sports, campus events, and your daily weather outlook. I'm Tyler Euchner. Now, Tropical Depression Ida is drenching the Gulf Coast as it moves from the south into the parts of the east. Flooding is forecast through tomorrow, along with the possibility of tornadoes. The storm didn't cause nearly as much damage in Mississippi as it did in Louisiana. More than a million people there are still without power, and some outages could last for six weeks. Rescuers spent yesterday saving hundreds of people, and those who evacuated in time are being told not to return to their home just yet. So far, the death toll is up to two, but is expected to rise. The FBI, the FBI says hate, hate crimes are up to the highest level in dozens of years. A new report shows a surge of violence against African Americans and those of Asian descent last year. Back in May, President Biden signed a measure aimed at protecting Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders after an increase in attacks due to COVID crisis. The bill was signed, signed overwhelmingly by the House and Senate. An, an accused killer's attorney is asking that his trial be moved out of Woodbury County. Mar Marvin Hildreth Jr. is charged with a murder for a Memorial Day shooting in Luton. His defense team is asserting that the shooting was justified. Hildreth's attorney wants to, the trial moved to Polk, Johnson, Black Hawk, or Lynn counties. He points to the extensive media coverage of the case, saying it could be prejudice, could lead to prejudiced jurors and making a fair trial in Woodbury County impossible. Authorities say Hildreth shot 40-year-old Russell Moore of Mapleton to death May 31st. They say he also wounded an unidentified woman. Police say a homicide investigation is underway after a man's body was discovered in the Des Moines River. Authorities got a call about an under, unresponsive person on the riverbank at about 6 p.m. Monday. The victim has been identified as 43-year-old Des Moines man, although his name hasn't been re released. Police Sergeant Paul Par Parzek says, Observations at the scene indicate his death is the result of a homicide. When we come back, we will take a look at your WIT TV weather and entertainment news. Stay with us. Even though there is so much against us, you will see me wearing a face covering. And even with my face covered, you will see me as a son, as a friend to everyone I meet, as a fighter for change, as a woman who stands up for what I believe in. So join me in wearing a face covering to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. Because this is one small act of kindness that has the power to bring us all together. Myth. I can party with people as long as they don't have symptoms. That myth is false. As we've seen, up to 40% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can pass it on to others. So I'd recommend avoiding any social parties, especially indoor ones. If you want to try to socialize but reduce your risk, I'd recommend meeting outside in small groups, continuing to wear a mask, and socially distancing from others if you can. Then together, we can keep COVID-19 out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Welcome back. In entertainment news, the director of Candyman is making history thanks to the film's box office success. Universal Pictures announced that DaCosta is the first black female director to have their film debut at the top of the domestic box office. The horror movie, which is the follow-up to the 1992 film Candyman, brought it in over a, it in over a $22 million in its debut weekend. Speaking to the New York Times, DaCosta said the pressure around such a highly anticipated project could be distracting and overwhelming at times. However, she said she felt safe because of Jordan Pele co-wrote and produced the film. Just want, wanting to get, get their, their hands on, those that wanting to get their hands on the belongings of Chicago's legendary crime boss will soon have the opportunity. Three of Al Capone's granddaughters are going to let go of some, of some of his pieces in an auction this fall. It's scheduled for Friday, October 8th, but bids are, all, are being accepted online. Items include Al Capone's favorite Colt 44-45 semi-automatic pistol, 
with a starting bid of $50,000. There is also a handwritten letter to his son mailed from Alcatraz, a Patek Philippe pocket watch, a bed he slept in, and figurines owned by his wife. Taking a look at today's weather, today we will be partly sunny, then chances of thunderstorms into the late night with a high of 79. Tonight will be mostly clear with, a, with winds being up to about five, 5 to 10 miles per hour with a low of 62. And finally, tomorrow we will see a, we will be a sunny day with a high of 83. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to check up on the latest WIT TV programming at our website and our YouTube page. Enjoy your day.